episode of Life Below Zero. Alaskans battle the clock to stockpile for the coming winter. I got two right here. A summer storm threatens Sue Aiken's trade. If I don't get the fuel, the business will capitalize. Andy and Kate struggle with a new challenge on the Yukon. That's pretty freaking disappointing, man. The hailstones chase an elusive food source. Get it, baby girl! And Glenn protects his camp from unwelcome guests. There's something on the hill there. fish for the winter. Normally, we could just stick our fish wheel in, and by the end of the day, I'd probably have 50 pounds or more of good human food, and that's no longer there for us. The king salmon run has declined to the point where they've shut down all king salmon fishing on the Yukon River this year. We've lost probably our most consistent, reliable source of protein for the winter. This is going to be kind of an interesting experiment. Right now, I'm trying a new method of fishing. It's uh, with a fike net. Fike net's basically just a big funnel trap with some wings out there to try and funnel the fish in. They go into the trap, they can't find their way out, and you capture them. The advantage is uh, the fish are still alive, so if you find one that you don't want, you can release it unharmed. If a king salmon gets in there, I can let them go without, uh, without killing them. That's the way I like to see them cut. I'm taking all the moose food. That's not nice. <laughs> this method has been used for eight or 9,000 years by, by indigenous people around the world. Uh, they didn't have nets, and they didn't have wire, and they didn't have the plastic floats 9,000 years ago, so they made everything out of wood. It's something I've wanted to try for a long time, and uh, the lack of king salmon is kind of forcing me to try this method out. my first hoop here. I'm using a barrel for a template just to try and get me sort of round. Basically I'm making a big hoop. I'm going to make a slightly smaller hoop and then start attaching my willow strips to it. I'm not really sure how strong I need to make this but I think it's one of those things that the more I add to it the stronger it's going to get. You know I've never made a hoop trap before. So much of living out here is just drawing from the experiences you have. So every new skill and every new experience you have gives you some other foundation for the next thing you want to do. And you'll be able to use it for something else later on. Although it's taking a bunch of time right now, payoff might be pretty good in the future. I don't know. I guess that's yet to be seen. Be another experiment. But hey, that's life on the Yukon. Every year we got to deal with something. Every year is about adapting. All right. So that's that's the main bulk of it. It's a little bit thick up here. I might have to add a few more thinner ones up here. But that's all right. It's just got to hold fish. It's not going to be pretty, but it'll work. <laughs> know in life where your needs are, where your wants are, what your abilities are, and kind of marry it up. Stay here, but 
from the middle of June through sometime in the middle of September, those are all the months that I get to make the revenue to keep this place profitable. I mean, it is not inexpensive to do what I do, but, you know, why do I do it? Um, to afford the style of life I want to live the rest of the year. You know, if I work my ass off for three months, then I got nine months I can play and live. So it's a fair enough trade. For Sue Akins, the arrival of clients in Kavik means she must get vital resources into camp or risk losing crucial revenue. One of the most elemental things I need to have available is water. I have to get water out of the river and pumped in through the, through the system. I'm gonna head down to the river. I wanna see what the water, what the river is looking like. I must have a clearer water to pump into my water system. The major problem for me, this has been just a uh, atypically wet uh, spring and summer. All the rain, all this deluge, the water hits the tundra and it all wants to live at the lowest point, which is the rivers, uh, but it churns it up. And that has kept me from being able to pump. Yeah, this is not, this is not looking good at all can't really pump that and it's not even real safe to get too close to the edge because it's undercutting my bank. That current is real swift and that's a big old pile of mud. I'll continue to check it as soon as I see that I can at least read through it with no problems and not have dirt, you know, then I'll be pumping it. It's a done deal, loose wheel. Check it again tomorrow. What goes through the mind the stream of consciousness, how you feel, how you experience reality each day, is affected by the spaces you occupy. Bear came along and ripped up my sod house again. Bears seem to be attracted to this place. Every now and then they'll come, and of course it smells like food in there. I've had meat hanging in there, and the bears will come and rip the place up when I'm away from camp. So it's something that is a continuous thing. This sod house works out pretty well for storing food most of the time, but I thought that for smaller amounts of food, if I just dug a hole straight down in the ground, a smaller hole, it might actually keep it even cooler than this sod house does. And also, the bears might be less interested in digging into it I'm looking around for a spot to put this little refrigerator, and the main thing I'm thinking about is convenience. I want to be able to go in and out of it easily. So I could put it right here in the front yard somewhere. The problem with this, though, is that the sun is to the south during the day, and it'll be beaten down on this hole. I'd rather have it in a place that's shaded. So I'm thinking if I put it on the north side of the cabin, that might be the best spot. If I dig the hole right here, during the middle of the day, it'll be in the shade. That might be the best spot for it. Isolated in the Brooks Range, Glenn relies on 10 years of experience to survive the Arctic's predators and grueling weather. Without access to power tools, he must build each structure in camp with the resources around him. In the summer, it can get up into the 80s here sometimes. I've seen it 85 degrees. Cooler ground is going to help me to preserve food. It's just like putting it in a refrigerator. The gravelly soil is well drained. I should be able to dig down in here a few feet without getting wet. That feels nice and cool down here. Got a nice size hole. On to the next step. So I'm looking for some spruce trees in order to line my refrigerator with them. And a lot of the trees around here just aren't suitable. If I uh, use trees that are too big, it's gonna take up a lot of space in that hole that I dug. If they're too small, think of how many I'll need to build the height of the wall. So this is a happy medium. One I can reach around about that big, that's a good sized tree. If I wanted to run a modern refrigerator or a freezer out here, I'd have to have propane or I'd have to have gasoline to run a generator all the time and produce electricity. I don't want to get into those complicated systems. This is just simple. It serves my needs. Why get more complicated? 
we're always thinking about the future. You know, you want to stock things up. You want to prepare yourself for later life, all that stuff. You watch your kids grow. You think about the things you want to accomplish, and you work towards them. But, um, you know, we live in today. We enjoy every day for today. Choice. Chip and Agnes Hailstone spend their summers in Kiwalik, harvesting meat for the winter and teaching their daughters native hunting methods critical at this time of year. There's not very many ducks or geese flying, so they must be mol molting. So we're going to go out and go um, take a walk towards the lakes and ponds back there and uh, go see what the um, birds are doing. In the summertime, the females are off raising their babies, and the males all fly to lakes and stuff, and when they molt, their feathers are coming out, and they're growing new ones. They're flightless for about maybe a week or so. They're grouped up for mutual protection. They're getting a chance to get in a bunch of ducks at one time. The thing is, the birds leave. <laughs> they migrate south, and we don't see them until maybe next May, next June. So it doesn't give us much time to get at them. Woo! Oh, no, I'm sorry! We're not going to use any firearms, but I am going to carry some in case the bears or other animals come around. But um, we're going to take our clubs and our paddles. This is a harpoon. If there's a duck or something, I can spear it or I can whack it. Yep, beat it in the head. This is actually a um, legal way to hunt. It's way cheaper to do a hunt this way. We don't have to use any ammo or um, anything but our energy to try to catch them. Shall we? Yep. Come on, puppy dog. Let's go. These are uh, big mud flats. This is uh, uh, where the valley meets the ocean. It's a little deep here, girls. This is swampy, mushy, marshy. This is a very difficult walk. Climb aboard, Neil Whale. There's a lot of places where the moss is really deep. There's a lot of places where the mud is really deep. People trip, twist their ankles, fracture their ankles. All kinds of bad things can happen on this tundra when you're walking with heavy loads. So you try to take it as light as possible. You gotta keep your girls' eyes open for ducks now and stuff. Why don't you guys get on that side, and I'll go along this edge and see what I can knock out. Try not to go too far ahead. It's our shotgun so will these. <laughs> yep. Good luck, ladies. Baby ducks. There goes puppy. I've been watching the puppy dog and it's been running all over the place and I haven't seen it scare any birds or ducks up yet. So we're just going to keep going around the lake. There's a bunch of ducks. Oh, right there. stalking the tundra for flightless male ducks. It is their last chance to stockpile meat before the birds migrate south for the winter. Get in front of you, Agnes. It's right on the river's edge. Carol, you gotta go over about a foot. It's be right there, now. It's watching me. You can hit it right there. You got it, get it, get it, get it. You got it, get it. Just reach down and grab it with your hand. Hurry up, it's getting away. We always call them when they're small like that. They're just right for just a cup of soup. But um, that's Carol's first one, so um, we'll get to have some real good soup broth I'll later. Right on, Carol. Got a duck without a shotgun shell. Carol's duck. <laughs> that's how you girls have to do it. Carol got herself a, a duck sight unseen. I pointed it out to her, and she, she whacked it. Did a good job too of bringing it in, so I was pretty happy with that. We'll flip the duck up in the rafter and save it till we get some more. One little duck ain't gonna feed nobody. 
Yeah, one duck is not gonna feed all of us, huh? Nope. That's all right, it's a start. We'll get a couple more ducks tomorrow, maybe. To be connected to nature. It's just fascinating, all the stuff that's going on. When you start paying attention. And every year, I learn something new. In order to preserve his food and keep it safe from predators and the elements, Glenn must use the resources surrounding his camp to build a new refrigeration unit. I like variety. I would not get into the business of digging refrigerator holes repetitively for a living. But if I only have to build one in my lifetime, it's a lot of fun. This will be a little longer. I can put five-gallon buckets in there. I can probably fit four of them in there. Berries, fish, whatever I want to put down in there. Meat. It's going to stay much cooler on hot days. And that's going to help me to keep food longer. I think that's going to do it. That's high enough for the walls. Now that I've got the walls in, next thing I need to do is put a covering on. I need some kind of lid that I can open and close relatively easily, but that is going to insulate and keep the warm air out and the cold air in. These started out as teepee poles 14 years ago. I cut them. Then I shortened them to make a tent that I could use in the winter. Now I'm going to cut them again, and I'm going to use them as part of my refrigerator lid. I wouldn't know the materials if I just bought them in a store. And I would describe it as a more intimate relationship with the things that I'm using. They don't come from some far off distant place. I know their history. I watch the trees grow around me. I watch the lake every day. I watch the animals I eat. That'll be the lid right there. I just need to get some insulation. I got a nice thick piece of moss to put over the top of this. I'll cut it right here, and I'll be able to just lift that up. I'm going to go grab some moss. This looks like a nice patch of moss right here. I just want it approximately the right size. It's not easy to find good moss because there are a lot of roots and trees in the ground. I want a one continuous piece for that door, a nice thick piece. It's all attached at the bottom by roots, so I have to dig. Out here, you don't have to try to stay in shape. The way I live without machinery, there's no choice. All I have to do is try it on for size. It should fit right in there. That should work great. Most people don't want to change until they're forced to change. And we're being forced to change, so... You can't cry about it. You just got to get out there and do what you can and, and try and get by. That's what life out in the bush is all about. Thanks. Let's go get some fish. With salmon fishing closed on the Yukon, Andy and Kate Bassett are trying a new fish trap to stock up enough food before the freeze overtakes the river. I'm going to take this pike trap four miles down river to a slough. I'm going to set it in this slough to try and avoid catching king salmon. King salmon do not travel up these back sloughs, especially a dead end slough. So this is the habitat that a lot of pike, whitefish, and sheepfish live in. So that's where I'm going to go after them. Go find the deepest spot. I think right here would probably be a good place for the cod end. To take the wings and just hold the wings out, out there. We'll get them untangled later. In we go. Now the question is, is it going to float or not? It's going to need a little bit of downward pressure. Nothing's going to get by the pike slayer. <laughs> okay, I think we're set, babe. What do you think? I think it looks great. Uh, I think this will work pretty good. See, it looks like the Yukon's pushing in a little bit right now. Yeah. See it? Certainly anything coming into the slough isn't going to get by it, that's for sure. I'll check it tomorrow morning. And if it's catching fish, yeehaw. I don't mind putting work in. As long as I'm going to have long-term benefits from that work, it makes all that hard work that you put into living this way 
six inches last night so i'm hoping that's going to push some fish into the slough we're hoping for i don't know half a dozen maybe but i'll be happy with one or two just to make sure that the trap's working here fishy fishy something it's a bust <laughs> that's pretty freaking disappointing man I'm wondering if they're getting out I don't think I made it tight enough or whatever so what do we do bring it home work on it yeah maybe I ought to just bring it home so uh, let me uh let me pull the rest of this stuff and go back and spend more time on this. As much as I don't really feel like putting the time into this right now, I've, I've got pretty much got to do it. Time is precious for us in the summertime. I got so many projects I got to get going on. That's why I'm feeling a little agitated. Summers are just too short here. There's just too much to do. It's a land of extremes. If you are a person that needs to maintain the illusion of control, you're not going to do well out here at all. Well, it's definitely a, a summertime. It just doesn't feel like it. I mean, this is the typically atypical weather on the North Slope. The only thing you can count on is the fact that you can't count on anything been a really 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 wet summer and uh mother nature turned on the ac today so this uh this definitely is getting in the way again of me being able to get a fuel delivery you know i'm out here at the fuel shed trying to get ready for it to come in and uh, the weather came in instead the plane had to be turned around and uh, they're going to call it for the whole weekend so i'm just kind of boned again I've really got to start getting concerned. You know, I'm still selling fuel. I'm now getting to the point where I have to get the fuel or these planes aren't going to be able to fly. It's, it's not so much that, you know, if I don't get the fuel, I'm going to die. If I don't get the fuel, the business of cabin dies. It's, it's that integral to the survival of the business. of weeks since I've been able to pump water so I need to get down to the river and if it's clear enough at all you know then I then I can pump and get back up to full speed it's looking better than it has for a few days it's certainly not ready to pump but it's looking a lot better that's actually not bad at all I can filter that we should probably pump kind of works out for them some of the time, but uh, there's a there's a misperception that they have some control over what happens. In Alaska, we will all down to a T say that weather is king. It controls what we can hunt, what's in the area, whether you can get water or you can't get water. Um, every aspect of your life is governed by what the whims of nature. You take it as it comes. So now that it's pumping, Now it's time to go back in, see where it's at in my initial tank. This is what I want to see. So it's gone through the main filter as it's coming in, another filter here, three filters there, inline injected parts per billion on the chlorine additive, into the tank. When you have the chance, you grab your liquid bowl. 
90% of the revenue I need to make is going to be in the next four to six weeks. And if I can't give them the services they've come to expect, I'm not going to make that revenue. So this is a, this is a, definitely a feather in my cap. We're always thinking about the future and, and saving food for tomorrow. You know, you can't hold on to it like money in the bank. You got to let it go. It all disappears as a consumable commodity. So we're always looking for more. So you guys want to just get ready and go do this again? Courtney? Go find more ducks and all? This is another day in the life. But today I think we're going to go look for ducks again. If we want to get some ducks, we just got to find a nice bunch of them. It's not always easy. Certainly every pond doesn't have a duck. And there's thousands of ponds here. This is a uh, tidal flats down here. So ducks shift from area to area as they feed, but we're gonna find where there's a big group of them somewhere. You gotta be a big group of them somewhere. You ready, kiddo? Come grab your harpoon. Try not to bend those babies. Bye-bye, puppy. Too bad you can't come. You scare away too many ducks. Come on, kiddos. You ready? kind of sore and tired from walking yesterday all along the lakes and stuff we're still gonna go do this again today because uh, we have just a short limited time we can actually do this while the ducks and birds are all molting and they can't fly and get away from us so uh we're just gonna keep on walking sloughs and lakes and just hopefully come across a flock of birds what do you see over there i think i see ducks but i don't know what kind so here we'll go have a look Hey! Feathers? Yeah, molting ducks. We're getting close. Let's keep going. What they do is just keep running, trying to get away from us, and um, we have to really keep moving. They're a little excited, but um, hopefully the birds will calm down and we'll have another chance at getting some. Oh, they're coming to us. They are where? They're right there. They're coming out of the water. Oh man, there's loads of them over there. Coming to us. I see them. They're really watching us. So how are you going to do this? You go wide this way. Me and Carol go wide this way if you take Kooten. And just keep minds on where we are and uh, do some good shotgunning, huh? Yeah. Yep, don't be afraid to use that shotgun. Me and Carol will block off the rest anyway. We'll whack them with our sticks. Come, Kooten. Ducks aren't moving. We got to get down low and start getting over there. Let's go. Yeah, they're just hiding in the grass someplace around here. Get it, baby girl. drink before me and I don't swim as good as a duck so I chucked a harpoon at it and missed it again so such is life oh we just keep on going I think there's a bunch of black heads over here I thought it was the wind on the grass but I'm very sure it's either ducks or geese if it's ducks all male ducks will be good if it's geese and you don't see babies and it's just a bunch of adult geese those are good too Fat geese. 
up. Oh, they get away? It's all teamwork. Even though my daughter couldn't didn't kill one, she was making her presence by running back and forth, and the geese didn't want to go to her, so it made them lay down, and me and Carol were able to go catch to them. Hey. All right. Oh. Hang on. Over here, baby. Oh, oh yeah, we did quite a bundle. I, the collection. I would say this is enough for today. Yeah. For tomorrow. Yeah, this is about all we can carry home. I'm pretty happy for my daughter. Hey. They're gonna learn where to go get food when there's no birds flying, maybe no fish in their net. Right now, there's no caribou around. And if they need something, I wanted them to know where to start looking and where to end up. You girls know this place now. You'll never fail if you come here. Yep. You all ready? We've got a long walk. A happy one. We get to go home and pluck geese and eat dinner. We didn't find male ducks, we found geese, geese with no babies. And the geese that have no babies or have lost their babies or maybe didn't have any this year were all grouped up together for mutual protection. Nine. And these were rather bulky and big and they're just so big they couldn't hide so well. So we had much better luck. Fourteen. Oh, that was good haul. We all good dinner. Well, that'll make some jars of geese and we can eat a couple, three or four fresh. We'll eat a couple of these, and we'll have about ten good jars of geese. Since we don't have any in the freezer for this winter, we'll save those aside to make a huge pot of goose soup out of these and then jar up the goose soup. Good job, girls. Yeah, you could go ahead and take your stuff yep, off. Yep, we'll take your stuff off and dry out. There's no store out here. We ain't got no money, but um, this is the store. This is what was in the aisle today. We just had a good time. I'm pretty happy with my kids. This first tree turns the sunlight into needles. And the grouse turns the needles into meat for me. It's like a cycle, that's what I'm into. Part of the big cycle. Right here, this is where I'll start walking, looking for the berries. High in the Brooks Range, Glenn has a brief opportunity to gather berries before winter overtakes the land. I like to walk on these low ridges that are drier, gravelly soil, less brush, easier walking. Hey, this looks like some mushrooms I can eat right here. There are other mushrooms that look very similar to this that are poisonous, but this one has an orangish color, and when I break it, I can tell that that's the type I'm looking for. Something else I can take back and stick in the fridge. Oh, here's a nice patch of blueberries right here. Some good enough berries here to stop and pick for a while. With this berry picker, I can pick faster. There are a lot of different plants that you can eat, but there are some plants out here that can kill you if you eat them. So you want to know which ones are edible and which ones are poisonous. What's that? There's something on the hill there. I'll have a closer look with my rifle. Something up there moving through the trees. I'm not sure what it is. It's brown. It's a big animal. What's that? There's something on the hill there. I'm not sure what it is. It's brown. It's a big animal. There are grizzlies around. It's a moose. Yeah, I can see now it's a moose. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on something like that, though, because there are bears around. It's still another month until I hunt moose. Moose season's later in the fall. I got a couple gallons of berries now. I'm going to head back to camp, and on the way, I'll be canoeing. I can do some fishing. There might be some pike or some white fish along the way I can catch. This is just a small lake way up in the mountains. I'm a long, long ways from the ocean, so I don't get fish migrating into this lake from the ocean. I live mostly on moose meat and caribou out here. I have a fish once in a great while for variety I like. I got something. 
There. I'm gonna keep fishing because the fish are biting. When you're up in the mountains a long ways from the ocean, it's not the same kind of fishing you get when you're in a big river system where the fish are going in and out to the ocean. Get some food for the fridge. One way to get a refrigerator is to go to the store and buy it. Bring it home, plug it into electricity. You got your refrigerator. What I had to do here, I dug a hole, lined it with spruce trees, found myself a piece of moss that will insulate for the lid. It was an experiment. I never built a refrigerator before. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. What a way to live, you know? Go out and pick my fruit in the forest, catch my fish in the lake. I prefer it to any restaurant in the world. Consistent access to the resources is our insurance out here in the bush. You take that away from us, and it really affects our lives directly and immediately. this winter i gotta add i gotta add more willows in here obviously right if they came through here they could get out here i just didn't get them close enough together clock's ticking falls just around the corner and uh basically we haven't put up any fish and that's a real big concern for me like that size doesn't matter even smaller than that'll work probably for me for every king salmon i used to catch i now have to catch about 10 pike and that's turning out to be not as easy as I thought it would be. Okay, I think we got everything, huh? Okay. We're fishing. Check it tomorrow. Swear some more tomorrow when it doesn't have any fish in it. Tomorrow morning, there's no betting on whether we get any fish or not. No, we won't even, <laughs> we won't even discuss it. It's undisturbed. No, it's still underwater. Yep. That's a good sign. All right. Let's see what we got. like son of a bitch well this is obviously not producing at all and we're spending a lot of time and gasoline and we're not getting a damn thing out of this i'm kind of baffled as to why i'm not catching fish right now here i mean i've got it completely closed off so anything coming in it's got to come in here i can't i can't imagine the fish are going in and then coming back out so for some reason we're just not getting them here we know there are fish at the mouth, right at the mouth. We, we know they travel along the, the edges, right? So let's just give that a shot and see what happens. I've been fishing it for days and so far I haven't caught anything. So I don't know if it's my design or if there just aren't any fish here. I'm feeling a little bit stressed out right now because we're putting a lot of time into fishing and we're not getting anything. I'm going to keep trying. Well, this is a waste of time. 
Waste of time, waste of effort, waste of everything. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I should pick up something. This is the most effort I've ever put into fishing with zero results in my entire life. It's a tough lesson to learn, you know, and that's a part of trying anything new out here. Trying to develop new methods and go for a different resource, there's a, there's a learning curve. And right now my learning curve is kind of on the negative side and I don't really like that. I'm not a person that really likes to fail at things. I don't mind experimenting and having some minor failures, but I don't like it when I try something and put a bunch of time into it and it's a complete waste of my time. It looks like probably what's gonna end up happening for Kate and I is uh, fall time's gonna come. That's gonna be a really critical moment for us to make sure that we get fall chum salmon. So we're gonna pray that that run is good enough for us to fish. And uh, I think I'm going to be hunting moose and caribou and black bears a whole lot more because it's looking like we're not going to have much fish for the winter time. Bam, like that, things change. If you can't roll with the punches, you know, don't get in the boxing ring then. Sue's fuel delivery. With more clients set to arrive, getting fuel into camp is crucial to Sue's business. Trying to get the fuel delivery in and um, just kept getting blown by the weather. But we cleared up, the ceiling got nice, they launched, and in between then and now, we've come back down to the ground in fog. Okay, yeah, pop by right over your place right now. I can hear you. As you go around, let me know what you're thinking so I can help out. Plane just radioed in. He's going overhead now. He's going to try to find a hole to come through. If not, he'll have to detour and go to Dead Horse and wait it out. Hey, come back, come around and uh, take a landing to the east. All right, buddy. Sounds like he's going to try it. six weeks is when I see the heaviest concentration of the small planes coming in and doing their thing. So if I'm not able to get all the loads I need, I would not be in the black and I would not have a lease anymore. Kavik would be a memory. Right as the fuel came in, bam, there's the helicopter that needs it. He's going to use about 1,500 gallons in the next three days. That's half of what I just got. You know, jet fuel delivered, jet fuel out. You know, that's that's the nature of the business. As soon as I get it, man, they're after it. So how much is that little pig gonna drink today, do you think? 64.1. 64.1. Yep, ready to do business. And then ready for winter. 